Hello class, this is lesson 15.3, Tangent and Circumscribed Angles. The goal for this lesson is to identify and describe the relationships among inscribed angles, the radii, and the chords. So first, let's talk about what is tangent. What is a tangent line? So a tangent line is a line that's in the same plane as a circle and in that it intersects the circle at exactly one point. Now that point where the line intersects the circle is called the point of tangency. So in this diagram here, uh, we have our circle and line on the same plane. They're, they're both on the same flat surface. And notice that this line intersects the circle at one point. So this P is called the point of tangency. This line is the tangent line. So what we're going to do is we're going to just practice on how to write tangent lines and how to write points of tangency. In this diagram right here, um, let's list uh, two tangent lines that we see in this figure. So looking at, let's look at this line right here, uh, line BK, that is a tangent line for both the small circle and the big circle. Another one would be line BF. Now points of tangency are point B, D, K, E, and, and I think that's it. So let's write um, B, D, K, and E. The reason why we're learning about tangent lines is uh, due to this theorem uh, here, which is the tangent radius theorem. And the way this theorem goes is it tells us that if a line is tangent to a circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius uh, drawn at the point of tangency. So if you remember, um, you have a circle, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Now, if you have a tangent line, the radius will always be perpendicular to that tangent line, meaning that you would have 90 degree angles on both sides. Next, looking at the converse of the tangent uh, radius theorem. So if you have a perpendicular line uh, with the radius and a line um, that intersects a circle at one point, then that line is tangent. So kind of looking at this object or this figure here, if you know that this line and this radius are perpendicular, meaning that they form right angles, then you can call this line a tangent line. But if they do not form right angles, then you cannot call this a tangent line. So a tangent line intersects the circle at one point, called the point of tangency, and uh, creates uh, perpendicular lines with the radius. Okay, next what we're going to talk about is this theorem, um, but first we're going to talk about what is a circumscribed angle. So a circumscribed angle is an angle formed by two rays from a common endpoint that are tangent to a circle. So let me kind of highlight where the circumscribed angle is in this figure, and that is here. This angle is the circumscribed angle. Now, the reason why they tell us that um, this is a circumscribed angle is because it's formed by two rays. So we see how we have a ray here, ray XA and ray XB. 
And both of these rays um, are tangent lines. And the theorem goes like this. Uh, the measurement of angle AXB, AXB, so this angle, plus the measurement of angle ACB is equal to 180 degrees. So these two angles are supplementary. They equal 180 degrees. Remember that this angle here is called the central angle. This angle is the circumscribed angle. So the circumscribed angle plus the central angle is equal to 180 degrees. So let's look at some problems uh, that relate to this theorem. On page 22 of your packet, I want to look at problem number one and then problem number two after. So for problem number one, uh, we have a circumscribed angle here. And I have a central angle of 117 degrees. Now, because these are tangent lines, I also know that these are right angles because they are perpendicular to the radius. But the theorem that we're going to use is the circumscribed angle theorem where the circumscribed angle plus the central angle equal 180. x plus 117 equals 180. Then you could solve for x by subtracting 117 to both sides. And 180 minus 117, that is 63 degrees. Similar problem here. So now the circumscribed angle is 45. And we don't know what the central angle, but we still know that these two add up to 180. So 45 plus x equal 180. Subtract 45 to both sides. And x is equal to 135 degrees. Okay, now let's look at problem, uh, problems three to six. So we're gonna be focusing on this figure here. And we wanna find out a couple things. So for number three, we wanna find out what the measurement of angle BCD is. So what is the central angle? Knowing that the circumscribed angle is 32. Remembering that the circumscribed angle and the central angle are supplementary, they add up to 180. So kind of what we did up here, you could find out this angle by subtracting 32 from 180. And that would give you 148 degrees. So let me kind of make a mark here. This angle is 148 degrees. Then the measurement of angle CDA. So CDA What is this angle here? Well, remember that uh, these lines are tangent lines. So these have to be right angles. So CDA is 90 degrees. Then uh, the measurement of angle BED. So BED. Now BED is an inscribed angle. And we could find this inscribed angle if we knew the arc. This kind of goes back to uh, lesson 15.1. But let me just redraw this figure with the information that we just need. So if we have a circle, we have an angle here. So this is B E D. We want to find out what this angle is. 
And to do that, we need to find out what this arc is. Now, it, if we know the central angle is 148, then this arc is 148 degrees. Now, if this is 148 degrees, then this has to be half of this. So half of 148 is 74 degrees. So BED is 74 degrees. Next, the measurement of angle DBA. So DBA, and that is a tangent line, so that is 90 degrees as well with number four. So that completes uh, lesson 15.3. It was all about tangent lines and um, using that theorem that we talked about here with circumscribed angles and the central angle, knowing that these two are right angles. <coughs> so that completes this lesson. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment box and I can answer those questions as I get them. Thank you, bye.